enjoy the divine liturgy this morning. We heard St. Paul teach us in his epistle to the Romans that glory, honor, and peace is to everyone who does good. We learn from St. Matthew that when Jesus called his disciples Peter and Andrew, they, quote, immediately left their nets and followed them. We learned that later, James and John, the sons of Zebedee, immediately left their boat and father and followed Jesus. I don't know that there are two more appropriate verses in the New Testament that describe the spirit of tonight's dinner. This is the 32nd time that we come as a church family to a ministry awards dinner, to this banquet of achievement, this table of thanksgiving. We come to strengthen the bond of unity that links us to the past and bridges us to the future. That bond of faith, of love, and commitment which unites us in mind and spirit. We gather as a family of parishes tonight, as we do every year on the second Sunday of June, to express our gratitude to our priests and laity who contribute their time and talents to our parishes throughout New England. We come to celebrate our unity, to mentor and to encourage one another to read the pages of our parish achievements written by those whom we honor tonight. Pages written with the pen of faith, the ink of vision, and spiritual boldness. This evening we come to say thank you to our dedicated clergy who have answered the call of God to serve as his priests. Our communities are truly blessed with priests and deacons who serve Apophilakis Proeas Mevi Nikos from the morning watch until night, the spiritual needs of the faithful entrusted to their care. <laughs> we come tonight to say thank you to our laymen who volunteer as catechetical and Greek school teachers. We come to say thank you to our chanters and the members of our choirs to the members of our parish councils and to our Philokopa Society. We are here to express our appreciation to the ladies who take the Prospero and prepare the Poliva for memorial service. We come to say thank you to those who work during festivals and all our community functions. We come tonight because glory, honor, and peace is due to everyone, as St. Paul teaches, who has done good. And the people in this room have done good, and they deserve honor and peace. We gratefully acknowledge those honored tonight. We immediately leave what they do to offer their services to their parish, parishes whenever they are asked. It's always a particular pleasure for me to attend the awards dinner to see parishioners from our communities throughout New England gathering to share fellowship, to share their parish ministries, to encourage one another and to share their visions for the future of our church in America. It's a pleasure to see attendees meeting old friends and making new ones and taking pride in countless achievements of our priests and laity. This past year has been a difficult one Tonight is an opportunity for us to feel good about our church. We think we have an interesting program tonight which you will enjoy. It will begin with an inspiring presentation from a participant from our Metropolis Oratorical Festival which took place recently. When you hear this young man, you will go back home tonight confident that our Metropolis and our Archdiocese will have a bright future thanks to our young people. Now I will turn the program over to Lisa Pappas, the TV reporter from Boston 25 News. I think that at the end of the program you will agree with me that Lisa 
one day will soon be on network news from New York or from Washington. So, Lisa, would you please come up? Enjoy the program. So now I'm going to introduce our first honored guest tonight, who I just met briefly, and he's incredible. He's, he is an amazing writer. Close to 100 people wrote essays to try to find a way to pick a story from the Bible and find a way for it to relate to the real world, which is really important for young people to do. And so I want to introduce Michael and Dillian. He goes to the church in Peabody Mass, St. Basilio's Parish, and he will take it away from here. Thank you. Your Eminence, Reverend Fathers, award recipients, family and friends, good evening. In chapter 15 of the Gospel of Luke, Christ tells the parable of the lost sheep in response to the Pharisees' frustration that he receives sinners and eats with them. In the parable, the shepherd of a hundred sheep takes his flock out into the wilderness, and one of them wanders off. He leaves the others to search for this one, and when he returns with it, he calls to his friends to come and celebrate with him, because he has found his sheep. Christ used this story to show that he had not come to comfort the righteous, but to convert sinners, and that was where the Pharisees really needed to invest their energy. This parable and its message are still significant to this day, because Christ, our shepherd, is still searching for his lost sheep, us, the human race, led astray through original sin. It's not only the shepherd who could find the lost sheep, however. The other sheep, who symbolize the faithful, can help the shepherd to find the one who has left the flock, which represents the church. This is not as easy as it sounds in the parable, however, especially with the current social norms of everyone can have their religion and please leave them to it. St. Senator from the said all this quoted as saying, acquire the spirit of peace and thousands around you will be saved. This practice, teaching by example, is the best way to invite those outside the church to hear the truth of Christ. As is shown in the expression, live your life so that if the gospels were lost, people could look at your face and rewrite them. Despite this, we cannot afford to be merely passive, hoping for the return of non-believers. That will not work, as is proven by the fact that according to Pew Research Institute, the Orthodox Church is steadily shrinking. Why is this the case? Simple, evangelism. While the Catholic Church is running schools and the Protestant denominations are knocking on doors, what is the Orthodox Church doing? Obviously, not enough. In the early church, the apostles went out looking for disciples, rather than simply having their services, posting a few flyers, and waiting. They were actively involved in bringing Jews and Gentiles alike to the truth of Christ. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. While not invasive or forceful, they did not hide their light, but shared it. They told others about it, they were persistent in their efforts, and most importantly, they went out looking for converts. Jesus commanded his disciples just before his ascension into heaven to go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. To preach was Christ's last command to humanity on this earth. We should probably obey it. Even though public preaching has been given a bad name by the actions of radical groups like Jehovah's Witnesses and others, it is absolutely imperative to the growth of the church and the return of wandering sheep. In conclusion, we cannot simply sit back and hope for people to return to the flock. We must go out and look for them, like the Apostles and St. Paul, find them, and bring them back. This cannot be our only action, however. If we focus exclusively on looking for other sheep, the flock will be uncared for and will also wander off, defeating the purpose of looking for the one and destroying the flock. The church itself must be cared for and cultivated, because if it is not cultivated, it cannot grow. If it does not grow, it will be the branch that does not bear fruit, and we will have failed in our mission. We must work to bear fruit, the fruit of a growing church and the return of wandering sheep. Our church must be worthy of the, our, their return if this is to happen, however. We must have a balance of outreach and of care, of preaching and of teaching. We must facilitate and celebrate the, re the return of the repentant sinner as much and even more so than the repeated return of the baptized faithful. For there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than 99 just persons who need no repentance. Thank you.